What is going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to be talking about the general cloud infrastructure questions that I ask during DevOps interviews. So the most general purpose of this set of questions is to figure out um, where their knowledge of whatever cloud platform I'm interviewing for is, and more importantly, to see if they can design stuff from scratch, if they have like some intuition about architecture, or if they've only been working on a very tiny portion of an infrastructure and would have trouble, you know, thinking kind of more systematically or globally or holistically about how their how a design for a specific thing affects other things um, and makes managing the entire system harder. But you know, there's some baseline of like cloud concepts and knowledge and the specific platform concepts, services, and knowledge that I am that I test for. I'm gonna use AWS as the example here. Of course, there are many, many other large clouds. Um, GCP, Azure, even some like metal cloud, like there's there's a ton of stuff out there and I don't wanna shortchange anybody, but AWS is the gorilla in the room and will continue to be for the foreseeable future. So that is just the examples I'm gonna use, but fill in your own examples here. But as part of kind of catering to someone who might be coming from a different cloud or just a background that isn't hyper specific to AWS. For example, it's very hard for new people to get exposure to a lot of AWS because it's so expensive. And if you're learning on your own at home, it's like you are not gonna be spinning up, um, you know, like machine learning clusters or, or just there's so much that you're not gonna be able to touch. So I'm extremely forgiving on the, the details, the specifics. Uh, what I care about is big picture. As an example, instead of asking um, what is RDS, although <laughs> if they're interviewing for an AWS job, they should know what RDS is. But instead of that, I would I would tend towards things like, what did your web infrastructure stack look like in AWS? And let them tell me, oh, you know, we used EC2 here, um, we used EKS here, we used RDS for this database, we used Elastic Cache, which flavor uh, for this other thing, we used some queues, we, wh whatever. Let them map it out for you. But as always, the first real technical question as soon as I, I don't know what this was. This is the limpest air quote of all time. The first technical question that I ask uh, is always that self-measuring question. How would you rate yourself with AWS? How would you rate your knowledge on it? How comfortable are you with AWS? And then I, I like to start with a pretty open-ended question that, that I can kind of add on parts to. So what I'll usually say is, if I wanted to run like a pretty high traffic web infrastructure, what would that look like? And if they don't immediately are like, oh, I will draw you a three tier web architecture, then I'll usually say like specifically, uh, I have an Nginx web server. Um, it talks to uh, a PHP FPM backend and a MySQL database. I, until now, I've been hosting that on my, my little EC2 instance and suddenly like I'm on the top of Hacker News and bam, my instance is swamped. What would the first thing be that you would do to scale that um, on AWS? And I would let them, that's just leave it on the table, see what, they, see what they do with that and give them a second to think. Just say, you know, take your time, whatever. Okay, you as the interviewee, the candidate now, I've already said the, the answer I expect is like three tier web architecture, I expect you to split out the, the components of that application. The web server belongs on one layer probably, and maybe with the language runtime like PHP FPM, th the first thing I would expect anyone to do is to split the database out and then start thinking about how we can run more instances of the kind of web and language runtime layer. So splitting the database out is good. Um, I would expect some talk of, can we maybe get a load balancer in there? That's a good question. I would expect for someone slightly more advanced, probably more questions about, is it safe to run multiple instances of the application? Where's the state stored? That's a that's like a the mark of a good, someone who's not exactly a junior anymore is like, where's the state stored? Because that's where the pain always goes. State, you know, where you write things in the application, it has a huge amount of gravity and it has huge implications for how you scale something. So someone asking about where the state is kept and all the different places that state is kept, tells me, the interviewer, that that person has seen the real shit before and has had to scale something um, 
and has missed some part of the state and then has like crazy behavior happen or whatever. So that's the kind of answer I'm expecting to, to a very broad question like that. From there, because it's open-ended, I like to dig into specifics. So um, I will make up different scenarios. Like you get even more web traffic uh, off of Hacker News. They're all like hitting the same page. You know, what do you do? I would expect some caching related answer. Uh, maybe caching all the way out on a CDN. Maybe caching at the web server layer, not so great. Okay, now it's not just like a static page you know, that you can pre-generate once in cache. Um, it is a read heavy workload and you have to serve a ton of it. How do you scale that? And then I would expect them to start talking about, um, you know, splitting the database, depending on what database you're using. Can we get more database replicas, like read replicas, so that I can, so that my reads can hit multiple databases and I can kind of split the load among a bunch of different places. And then you get into how would you scale <laughs> a write heavy workload? Uh, and that is a much harder question to answer. You start getting into problems. Uh, if you've never heard of the cap theorem, it's just a theorem about the downsides you have to accept in certain, the trade-offs you have to accept in certain uh, state storage scenarios. And kind of, you have to pick the things that are the most important to you. Is high availability important to you? P is not optional. So C, A, P, consistency, availability, partition tolerance, pick two. It's one of those pick two things. If, if you can manage to talk about that in a way that makes sense um, and ask questions about like, okay, well, how do you scale a right heavy workload? Um, and you can work that into some like, well, what's the most important for our state storage? Do we want absolute consistency or can we have, um, you know, can we have data be eventually consistent? Um, or inconsistent for short periods of time. One question I really like, and this um, is a great way to gauge how advanced someone is, is just asking, knowing what you know about company X and what we do and the product that you might be working on, how do you, what do you imagine that our web infrastructure looks like or our infrastructure looks like in general? and you know have them draw some stuff on the on the whiteboard and see what they come up with you know that's a it's a great way a did they do they care about your company at all and have they done any homework about like what you do uh, and be on the spot if they're asked to like imagine an infrastructure to do a certain thing to deliver a certain kind of service what do they imagine um that's a great great open-ended way of digging in with someone and again because they're on the whiteboard you can jump in ask some questions oh yeah you know that's pretty close like so what would you do if you ran into this problem where this thing you just drew wasn't allowed to talk to this other thing you just drew for security or compliance reasons? You can kind of create your own adventure as you go. The flip side to this is if you can in a way that is NDA safe and like doesn't reveal anything that we don't want to know about your, uh, your current or previous employer, can you draw kind of a a dumbed down version of the infrastructure that you were working on most recently, or, or even the most, infra, uh, the, the most interesting infrastructure that you've worked on in the last few years. And then start asking questions about that. For example, if you, could, if you could design this again, based on your experience working with it, what parts of the design would you change? What issues did you run into a lot? Which problems in this infrastructure were especially hard to troubleshoot and why? A big question when it comes to cloud infrastructure in general is how do you do logging? Well, distributed systems, right? Logging is a really, really hard problem. And in a way, in my day-to-day -day work, it feels like it's still pretty much unsolved. Uh, the killer app is definitely has not been built yet for logging. There's certain things that certain companies have done that are really nice or open source projects, but it just doesn't feel like it's quite there yet. So um, it's a great subject to talk about. What types of logging stacks have you worked with? Uh, is a very common question. What did you like about that? What did you hate about that? Uh, if you were to design a new system right now, um, how would you do logging? Um, if you're talking about containers, if that's a part of the interview and a part of what they'll be doing at the company, the kinds of answers I would expect are, oh, like I would run a logging sidecar. You know, I would write log files as output from the container and then I would run a sidecar container to that, you, you know, in. I use Nomad, so in Nomad, and then I would ship that out to, you know, logging company X. 
it's a tough subject. I don't know. If you have any good logging questions, definitely leave them in the comments below because <laughs> I'm looking for some. It's just, uh, there's so, so many products out there. It's kind of a shitty unsolved problem, um, hard problem. When it goes wrong, it can go really wrong. Um, and yeah. So those are in general, the basic cloud infrastructure questions that I like to ask. You'll notice that they are very much focused on architecture concepts, digging into whatever they happen to know about, but you can't always expect that. So you do need to brush up on the absolute basics of your specific cloud. The, um, all the, definitely all the most popular services and on AWS, that's gonna be 15 or 20 services that you should just know the very basics of. What are they? What do they do? When would you use them? Thankfully, especially on AWS, there's a ton of useful diagrams, GCPs like this too, useful architecture diagrams that you can use to study, to see like different use cases. Um, and obviously those are in a way sales tools because they don't want you to run your own you know, version of Memcached or Redis. They want you to use their hosted version of that because it's much more expensive. Still, just like using that in uh, in your thinking, drawing a couple architecture diagrams, spending an afternoon just like crunching on the most interesting to you services and learning the basics will get you a long way towards answering some of the more specific questions. And just for the love of God, be honest about your experience level. This is maybe the one, like I said at the beginning, maybe the one area of the interview where I expect people early in their career to have the least amount of practical hands-on experience. And that's just because of the cost of these services. And like, that's like expecting someone who's never worked in IT before to have like vast amounts of like data center cabling experience. It's like, well, how did they get that? How, how should they have possibly come by that experience? Yeah, so don't feel weird. Just be honest about your experience level because any good interviewer is gonna know that your knowledge level and your experience level can be very different. And you can know a lot about something and be excited about it without having a ton of experience and still be a fantastic candidate for actually doing that work. Enjoy your interviews. As always, leave comments below. Uh, I would love to hear kind of your standout questions that you like to use or ones that you've been asked where you've really been able to kind of shine. Hope that's been helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Finger guns, can't get rid of the finger guns today. I'm sorry.